Lads and lasses, welcome back. It's Chris with Good Roads. In the last video, we had just put our advanced powder board into the mold to let the epoxy cure, and today we're gonna pull it out. And with a little bit of luck, everything will have gone well. We'll have one solid composite unit made of plastic, glass, resin, bamboo, and cherry. We're gonna take that, we're gonna shape it into something that looks oh so nice, slap a finish on it, wax it up, stick it with some bindings, and ride. So let's go. And we start with the moment of truth, pulling our clamps and spars off of our mold set, popping the top half off and pulling out the blank. How'd we do? I'm pretty happy with how the blank came out. We kept our curves. It looks like everything bonded together well. We got a little bit of epoxy showing up on the top sheet, but we're gonna run a finish over that anyway and we're gonna sand it a bunch, so that should be fine. Let's move on with the project. First thing that we need to do is find our binding inserts, and lucky us, they're steel. We can use a high strength magnet and move it close to where the binding inserts were and it'll snap right to them. We can then use that magnet to mark our spot for drilling. I just grabbed a nail real quick here. I'm using it to center punch my holes and then I'm gonna use this. This is actually a bit for a die grinder but I don't have a chamfer bit. This is the closest thing I have to that. And for our purposes today, it's gonna work. It'll naturally find the center of that binding insert and give us a nice kind of a chamfered edge hole down to it. So it'll be really easy to get our bolts in place when it's time to do that. And then once we've found our binding inserts, I need to reestablish my center line so I can trace my template and put my shape on the board. I know my binding inserts run parallel to the center of my board. So by measuring between the bolt holes, Right smack in the middle is the center line of my board. Find the longest straight edge you have and run that line all the way tip to tail. Next, I'm gonna grab the template that I drew up for this. It's a bit of an iteration on the powder surfers that we've done in the past. So what I'm gonna do is take that shape, lay it against my center line, trace one side, flip it over and trace the other side. And that's our shape drawn out on our blank. Next thing to do is to rough cut it I'm using a jigsaw here, as you can see. And I've also got a composite bit, which while it doesn't cut wood by itself very well, makes relatively quick work of things like fiberglass and plastic, and it won't dull out as fast. So you get a lot of mileage out of it. It's always good to use the right tool for the job. In this case, I happen to have the right saw blade and I swear it makes a big difference. So. If you're doing composite work like this, a composite blade goes a long way. The next step is kind of exciting because I get to play with a new tool. I've always wanted an oscillating spindle sander. I used to have one back in the shop when I was in school. I loved it. And this is like at least two and a half times cooler because it's an oscillating belt sander. That gives me a nice flat surface to do my long lines around. It gives me two curved surfaces to do curves in and then if I wanted to, I could swap it out and just use the spindles as well. But for this project, I'm using the belt sander. When I rough cut the shape, I cut out from the line a little bit. I'm gonna be using that sander to pull in and make sure I'm right up against that line so I'm getting exactly the shape that I want. The next thing I wanted to tackle was rounding the rails. Since we don't have a sidewall on this, a standard snowboard chamfer would actually introduce some stress points. So I wanna give it a nice curve and I could probably do it with a round over bit on a router. I don't know why, but I like rounding my rails by hand. There's something about it that just makes more pleasant shapes to the eye for me and to the hand, it feels nicer. There's something about it that harkens back to shapers and the surfboard community. This isn't a production run. We don't have to move super fast here. We can be artistic with the little details that we care about and for me, Hand shaping my rails is, it's just one of the small joys of the build. So I grabbed a random orbital sander with an 80 grit pad and went to town. Something else that I wanted to do since our top sheet is cherry, which is first of all, wood, duh. And second of all, pretty open green wood. I wanted to make sure it was nice and smooth. So I stepped up my grit on the sandpaper to 120 and then 220 and ran it over the top sheet and the rails so that they were nice and glassy smooth. And even after that, there were a couple places where I didn't really trust the random orbital sander to give me a good finish, some tight curves, some curves that were maybe not the same radius. So I went back in with a hand sanding block and finished up the last of it by hand. So 
So that's the sanding done, right? Well, great. The next step is your base grind. And since we don't have a wet stone grinding machine in the shop, and my guess is you don't either, we're gonna break that random orbital sander back out and sand the base of our board flat. If you're worried about it not looking quite as smooth as it did when you first got the material, or as smooth as the base of a board does from the shop, that's because we're gonna wax this. And that wax is gonna get into all the little nicks and scuffs that the sandpaper makes. It's gonna help the wax stick, and that will give you a nice, smooth running surface for your board. Our top sheet and core are both wood in this case, so we need to protect them from the elements. And the next thing that we need to do is put a finishing sheet on top of it. What I'm doing here is I'm laying tape as a barrier around the base. And this will mean that I can finish the top sheet without worrying about my polyurethane dripping around the edges of the board and getting all over the base. It'll just be contained to the top and the sides, which is where the wood is, which is the part that needs to get protected. Once that brim's in place, I'm gonna lay down a couple layers of my finish. In this case, I'm actually using a water-based polyurethane. It's meant for floors, so I think it'll be good and flexible. I think it'll be pretty tough. I am a little interested to see how water resistant it is. If this doesn't work out, or if you're a little shy about experimenting with water-based finishes on something that's gonna be in water, frozen water, but still water, an oil-based polyurethane or spar varnish will go a long way. You'll get a lot of mileage out of that. After the finish is applied, we're gonna pull that brim off. There's gonna be a little bit of extra finish around the edges where it pulled. I'm just cutting that off using a utility knife, trimming the flashing. Then I'm gonna go in and cut away the finish over our binding inserts and pick out all of that clay that we use to protect the threads. And once those binding inserts are clear, it's done. Check this thing out. I'm so excited about this shape. I think it looks so good. This was my most difficult snowboard build to date and it's done and I'm so happy with how it came out. So what do we do with the board that's done? We slap some wax on it. Slap some bindings on it. And take it for a test drive. Oh boy, hell on there. Jesus. This is different, you gotta like muscle it around. Yeah, there it is. I think, I think its name is gonna be the Powder Bird. So this is kind of a weird deck, right? It's a composite, like a normal snowboard. It's got a core and a top sheet and a base, it's waxed, but the core is not profiled. It's the same thickness all the way through and there's no edges. I gotta be honest, the unprofiled core did not seem to make that much of a difference. It's probably because I'm using bamboo for the core, and it's probably because it's a shape that's meant to be a little stiff anyway, but I found it really pleasantly flexible. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it might also be because of the glass we used. Since it doesn't have fibers running in the long direction, that might have given the board a little bit more flex as well. I was playing with my feet in the bindings a bit, testing out the torsional strength of the board, and I was really surprised surprised with the outcome. That worked a lot better than I was expecting. The edges, man, uh, it's not bad. It's just weird. <laughs> it's so easy to whip the board back and forth, but it doesn't 
do much. You can still engage the side cut and the edge of the board, but you have to really push and put a lot more effort into your movement than you would with a board that has metal edges. I think that's okay. For powder, you're not gonna be using those edges that much anyway. And honestly, this isn't the kind of board that you would wanna bring on the groomers to begin with, unless you wanted to have a very weird time. I'm kind of into weird times, so, you know. I've got a lot more things I wanna test out. This was really encouraging. It makes me think I can move up to that next rung in the board building ladder, and I wanna to get to it. So, I'm gonna move on to the next project. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you thought this was fun. I hope it might've inspired you. If you found this interesting and exciting and you're just getting started building boards, we've got videos on how to inexpensively make powder surfers from very cheap materials with very little tools. We've got videos on how to make molds. We've got videos on how to do glassing. We've got all kinds of resources available. I want to get you interested and involved in building boards. If you like this, please subscribe to the channel. We're gonna keep doing builds. We're gonna be stepping up our games. We're gonna be trying to make that content and those processes more accessible to you. I want to grow this community and grow this hobby, make more boards. So I hope you like it. If you've got any questions, leave me a comment. Thanks so much for sticking along with the journey. I'm really stoked on this one, guys. I can't wait for the next project. And I, I will see you soon. Oh, there's a mouse. There was a mouse. <laughs> I have a friend. That's cool.